Let the church say praise the Lord. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I've read to you from Titus chapter 2, verse 13. It is obvious that the Apostle Paul was concerned about the behavior of the Cretans in this context. And he was also conscious of the need to keep hope alive in such difficult times. The Cretans at the time were belligerent, argumentative people, uncontrolled, resentful of authority, and partial to the bottle. This was quite to the contrary of what Christians ought to be. The Christian life calls for discipline, obedience, and respect for others. Within the family and household, within the church, and in relation to the authorities. The Christian life must also be one of hope and faith, rooted in the words and promises of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came first to bring us back to God and who had promised to return that he may receive us unto himself. Therefore, the Apostle Paul exhorted the Cretans to continue to look for the blessed hope and the return of the Lord. An overview of our world and indeed our society puts us in a similar situation to that of the Cretans. We see the same belligerent spirit all around us. We see it in the family, we see it in the schools, we see it on the streets, and we see it in the church. There is a morbid spirit towards things spiritual and an increase in the excessive desire for things material. A falling away from the faith and the desire to identify with the world. There is no doubt in my mind, we are in perilous times. And perilous times are an indication that we are in the last days. Second Timothy chapter three, one to seven states, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The scripture goes on to say, from such time away, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and leave captive, silly women 
men laden with sins led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It is clear to me that we are experiencing all these things and because of this many are giving up on the Lord and in the process of abandoning ship and faith. But I say to you tonight, my brothers and sisters, in this 68th annual convention and throughout the length and breadth of this great land, keep your expectation high. Hold to your faith and remember the words of the apostle to the people of his day, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good work. This hope which the Apostle Paul emphasized is that which we also hope for. This hope is Christ Jesus. It's the only hope that is steadfast and sure in these uncertain times. Hebrews 6, 18, 19 says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled from refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope, oh praise God, we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. This hope is the soul's anchor. It's the essence of our salvation and the foreign brick that cements us against the adversities of life and the onslaught of the enemy. It's the same hope that sustained those who walked before us and became victorious for the cause of righteousness and the faith of the gospel. It was this hope that caused the patriarch Job to be able to say under extreme circumstances, extreme trying circumstances, for I know my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after the skin one yes. destroy this body, yes. yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. You see, the Christian hope is a gift of the Holy Spirit which abides. It is an essential characteristic of the Christian. It is not mere expectation and desire as in Greek literature, but includes 
trust. Confidence. Refuge in God. Who is the God of hope? Romans 15 and 13 states, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. It is Christ in you who is the hope of glory. Without Jesus Christ in your life, you cannot have this blessed hope. Hallelujah. All hopes that you may entertain at best can only be mere desires and wishful thinking. But with Jesus living on the inside, hope is made alive. And hope becomes an expression of eternal scope. For you see, hope of eternal life is bound up with that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. Indeed, the circumstances of life as we know it today necessitate the urgency to look more earnestly for that blessed hope. By that I mean the return of the Lord. This is the core of this message. The second coming of the Lord is a Bible doctrine which the church must not neglect to teach and proclaim in these end times. This must be an awareness among all believers. The church has a duty to propagate it and emphasize the importance of this great truth. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spoke consistently concerning his return in the Gospels. This underscores the truth of this teaching and the importance it holds for the believers. For I heard the word says in John 14, 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. Trouble all around. Trouble on every side. But saints of God, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. In other words, keep hope alive. I'm coming back to get you. And I'm going to take all who prove faithful. This is why we have got to keep looking. This is why we have got to keep watching. This is why we have got to keep waiting. For believe you me, he is coming again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. By her, the songwriter said, yeah. when upon the clouds of heaven, Christ shall come to earth again. Yeah. Will the world be glad to see him when our Lord shall come again? Will his coming bring rejoicing? Or will it bring tears and pain? Are you ready to receive him when our Lord shall come again? Will you join in lamentation? Or the angels glad refrain 
Will you help his people crown him when our Lord shall come again? Wake and pray till Jesus calls you. Help to gather in the grain. Then with joy you'll meet the Savior when our Lord, when our Lord shall come again. Oh, they'll be singing. They'll be shouting. There'll be sorrow, there'll be pain, there'll be weeping, there'll be praying when our Lord shall come again. During the ascension of Jesus Christ, the believers present had a heavenly confirmation. The word says, and while they look, steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into the heaven? This same Jesus, don't look for another. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This hope, which is a blessed one, encompasses all that is in the past, all that is present, and all that is to come. Without such a hope, the question of salvation will still be left in the balance and the perfection of the church will be a useless attainment. Also, there will be no reward for those who love and serve him. But I praise the Lord tonight in this great convention that he will present the church to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish notice that he is going to present the church to himself don't let us be carried away with the idea that we can present the church to Christ, a place of church. He will have to present it to himself, a glorious church. We do not have that kind of capacity. We don't have that kind of ability. Neither do we possess the power to effect such an accomplishment. But I praise God when Jesus cracked the clouds of glory, he will take on the honor to present the church to himself, a glorious church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we contemplate on these future blessings, we should be encouraged to remain faithful to God and seek to do those things that will put us in a state of readiness to meet the Lord at all times. We admonish in the world to testify concerning the blessed hope. In other words, talk about it. You see, it's important to our spiritual well-being and also a means to encourage the faith among the saints. First Peter 3 and 15 states, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer 
to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You should know the reason of your hope and you should be ready to share with others this great expectation. This does not mean that you must become fanatics and just sit by each day waiting for the coming of the Lord. Neither would it be scriptural to negotiate or set a time when the Lord will return. On the contrary, we must wait until the day is done. And at the same time, keep looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. The essence of beauty wrapped up in this blessed hope cannot be impaired by the cessation of earthly life. As a matter of fact, this hope offers one in the dying hour, it shares him and it, it offers him even more hope. Proverbs 14 and 32 says, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in death. Many times plans are made for the future, but when death steps in, the plans are canceled. But the plan the Lord has laid out for the saints embraces death and makes it a meaningful part of the blessed hope. This is what the Apostle Paul was talking about to the Corinthians when he said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Yes, this blessed hope is eternal in scope and it takes the believers where God is. It takes us to the eternal glory which eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, but nevertheless it is the inheritance of the righteous. Amen. Having this hope inspires clean and holy living. This hope causes one to be identified with the hope itself. Many claim they have the blessed hope and are looking forward to the coming of the Lord. But at the same time, they are defiled with impurities of sin and unrighteousness. But I am here to tell you tonight, looking for that blessed hope is more than an, an expression. It is more than a slogan. And it is more than what the world knows. You see, the world doesn't know too much about this blessed hope. But I heard the word says, Behold, look what man of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. The world knoweth him not. Oh God, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it goes not yet what we should be like. But we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And it goes on to say, every man that hath this hope in him, purifies himself, even as he is pure. 
to continue in this hope and to, and to be prepared for the glorious appearing. It is necessary to study and take heed to the word of God. You see, the scriptures are the source of hope toward the eternal and blessed hope. It sustains you from day to day and helps you to stay the power of Satan when he seeks to darken your way and dim your hope in God. Therefore, we will do well to keep it in our hearts and in our mouths. Romans 15 and 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for your learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope that day of the Lord's return is going to be a glorious day for the saints of God. It will be a day of turmoil for worldly minded people whose affections are centered on this height. But for the people of God, it will be a time of joy unspeakable. The struggle that you experience in this life will be counted as nothing when we see Jesus' face. Just to look upon his face is a feeling unthinkable. Indeed, it's a time of rapture. Human frailty and weakness will be raised to glory and strength for mortal will have become immortality. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 7, Paul in his exposition to the Thessalonians says, for the Lord himself, oh glory be to God, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And notice that there is always a shout. Therefore, saints of God, you might as well get fit. And you might as well practice now. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. You know, as I study this message, it became even more interesting and exciting to me because you see this hope that is being emphasized here was made possible through him who is the hope himself the strength of this blessed hope is grounded in the resurrection of Jesus Christ who is our only hope blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. In other words, the coming forth of Jesus from the grave made hope alive to us who are and it also extends the privilege to all flesh to view the coming of the Lord. However, there is going to be a marked difference with the second coming of the Lord. It will not be in the horse table like the first time. It will not be in human flesh like the first time. But he is coming 
in clouds with great glory and power and every eye shall see him. Revelation 1 and 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierce him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen the certainty of the lord's coming is evidenced by his word and the signs of the time and so we must begin our watch i say it's time to start the watch watch and pray the word says keep looking keep looking oh you haven't heard me i say keep looking not down but keep looking up oh glory be to god for i can hear the sound of the trumpet I can feel it in the air. Hallelujah. Keep hope alive. Soon and very soon. Hope will become reality. So keep it alive. Our blessed hope will soon appear. I can't tell you the time. I can't give you the day. I can't give you the year. I can't give you the month, but I know he is coming again. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or noon. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready? Should the Savior call today, would Jesus say, well done, or go away? My home is for the pure. The vile can never stay. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, glory be to God. Praise God. Oh, my brother. Are you ready for the call? Come on, convention. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready now? To crown our Savior, King and Lord of all. The kingdoms of this world shall soon be for him fall. We, we, the people of God shall see the king when he comes. We shall see the king. Come on, choir. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming. He's coming in power. We'll hear the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Keep hope alive. Keep looking up. Keep trusting. Keep waiting. Keep watching. Keep waiting. We shall see the king.